Maintenance and tuning of your djembe drum. Djembe drums don't require a lot of maintenance, and their skins certainly don't require a lot of maintenance. You, sh you shouldn't ever need to put oils on your skin, on your djembe skin, uh, hand oils or any kind of other oil. As a matter of fact, if you do use lotion or hand oil on your hands, it's best to not put it on just before you play because it'll just transfer to the skin and that's no good. I get a lot of my students asking, you know, can a djembe be tuned? What does it mean if it's out of tune? How does it sound? Let's look at that. Like a choir of voices, you have sopranos, altos, tenors, etc. Different voices. They're all in tune. So djembes can be in tune in a fairly wide range. There is out of tune, though. An example of in tune. That's a djembe in tune. In tune. A djembe that's out of tune. Ugh. Now, how do you know it's out of tune? One of the ways you can tell is by pressing down on the skin with your fingers. I can press down on this one a little bit, okay, but let's go to the one that's out of tune and see how much I press down on that. Okay, it's softer, much, much softer. Also, how do you know it's out of tune? Listen to the ring. Good ring, not too long, not too short. Over here. much longer, too long. And the bass, tight, the solid. The bass here, wobbly. I can even see the skin vibrating, kind of like a trampoline. Now on to tuning your djembe drum. When you receive your drum, you may have it where there are no knots in it, and only verticals. Here's a drum with knots in it. Here's a drum with no knots in it, only verticals, okay? And furthermore, it may look like this, where the extra rope you, you will use to tune your drum is down here wrapped around the drum. All right. I'm going to look for the end of this rope. Let's see, find it. Okay, I find it here. It's just tucked underneath one of the verticals. And I'm going to pull that out and unwrap the drum. Just like this. And then I'm going to use this rope to tune the drum. Notice that your verticals here come in pairs. Pair, 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 etc. Okay? Notice furthermore that you have a narrow space and a wide space. Narrow space, wide space, narrow space, wide space, etc. For efficiency's sake, I would recommend doing your knot on the wide space as opposed to the narrow space. So, I'm going to find the first wide space after where my rope begins here. And I'm going to use that to do my knot. Okay. So, I usually double over my rope so that it feeds through more quickly. And I'm going to look at these two ropes. Again, the first wide space. So, with the right rope of that space, I'm going to go over. With the left rope, I'm going to go over and then under the right rope again. Again, that's over, then over, then under. It's like this. I go over the right rope, like that. I go over the left rope, like that. And then I come under the right rope, like that. Okay, over, over, under. I'm gonna pull this through. If the rope kinks up like this, no problem. Don't fight it. Just unwind it. Okay? Very good. All right? You can see how that kind of makes a dollar sign? Okay? Now, I'm going to pull this down with my hand as much as possible. And when you have just verticals like this, you can probably pull it with your hand. Let's see if I wrap it around my hand. I can just pull it. Yeah, that's true. Okay? So that's your first knot. All right? Let's do one more, and then we can go on to tuning with knots. Okay. From my last knot, I'm going to go to my next two ropes. I'm going to go over, over, 
and under. Okay, see? After a while, it may get too tight to pull with your hand. So grab a dowel rod or a drumstick or anything. A hammer handle will do work, uh, do fine. And I'm going to wrap that around my dowel rod with a straight back. I'm going to pull. Next, we're going to go to doing knots when you already have knots. You can tune your djembe by tightening the ropes. And there's a few different ways to tighten the ropes. There are numerous different knotting systems that are used throughout the world. I'm going to show you two of the most common ones that I've seen in my experience. Now let's say you got your drum here and you're wondering about this tuning thing. Well I see some, some knots on this drum already. So I want to find where the knots end so I can find the end of the rope. So I see this looks like the knot ends right here and starts to wind around the, the drum there and now I'm looking for the end of the rope which I see right here. I'm going to get that out, it's tucked underneath the ropes. Okay, I'm just going to pull that out, unwind that, and this is the rope you'll use to tune your drum. Now some students ask me, what happens if I run out of this rope? Do I have to throw the drum away or something? I say, no, 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 no. You just got to add some more rope. It's no problem. All right, so from your last knot, you want to go to the next two single ropes, but look to the top when you figure out which of those next two. If you look to the bottom, it's going to be different. So look to the top. After your last knot, look to the top for the next two ropes. The first method I'm going to show you is this. I'm going to go over this rope like that. Then I'm going to go over this rope like that. Then I'm going to go under the first one. Okay, so I went over this one on the right, over this one on the left, and then back under the one on the right. You can see how it kind of makes a dollar sign shape. Okay, I pull this down with my hand, but usually it's a little too tight to pull with the hand, so I'm going to use some kind of dowel rod, a drumstick will do. And when you wrap your stick, wrap it on itself. I mean to say, wrap it once around and then a couple times on itself, and then it'll really lock in. I'm going to put this in my hand and I'm going to lean back with a straight back with my butt in front of my shoulders because I want to use the big leg muscles. I don't want to use my upper back muscles like that. That's no good. You can pull a muscle. It's no good. So I'm going to lean back and push forward with my thighs and let the weight of my back go down. One, two, three. Some people call that a snap because of the sound it makes. And what it does is it locks down like that. Okay, let's see that again. I'm going to go over, over, and under. That's why I say over, over, under. I'm going to look for the right rope here. Here's my last knot. Here are the next two ropes I'm going to work with. I'm going to go over this right one, like this. I'm going to go over the left one, like that. Then I'm going to co come underneath the first rope over, over, and under. I pull it down with my hand, I wrap my dowel rod just a couple of times with a straight back and straight arms. I say one, two, three. Make sure you focus your pull so that you do it all in one instant. You don't want to pull a long period of time because you don't get as much power. Say one, two, three. Exhale and pull, and it'll be no problem. You'll be able to get a lot of power, I guarantee. Now, let's see the second method of doing knots that I've seen. This one is going to start under the ropes. Okay. From this last knot, I'm going to go under these two ropes, then coming under the left rope, then going under these next two that will make the next knot after this one we're working on right now. Okay, so watch this. I pull it with my hand, I pull some slack with my hand, and now I'm ready to pull it. 
and wrap around my dowel rod, straighten my back, straighten my legs. One, two, three. And it pulls. Okay, it looks much the same as the other one. The second one that I showed you, the second method of pulling I showed you, generally is a little less labor intensive. It takes a little less uh, strength to pull it, uh, but sometimes I've seen that it doesn't lock as well. And that's the reason it's good to feed it under the next two ropes after, the, after you do a knot. That's what I've seen. Okay, so again, I'm going to go back here. So I went under these two ropes. And I'm going to come like that and under this left rope. And then I'm going to go under the next two that will make my next knot. See how that's set up? I'm under these two. Then I come over that one and then come under the left one over both and then I come under the next two okay I wrap my stick straighten my back straighten my legs and say one two three and that's it those are two of the most common ways that I've seen to tune your djembe drum